Amen. Good morning, Hanover Saints. Good morning and welcome to this, our second Sunday in this season of Lent. And hopefully the prelude got you in that spirit of quiet and calm and introspection as we seek to be closer to God and to one another. And so especially in these days where so much, so much of the news brings darkness. Let us now gather in this place so that we would receive the light, the light that God sends. And so as we do gather, we are mindful, as always, of the presence, the ongoing everlasting presence of our Christ, who is indeed the light of the world. And so now may God bless this, our time of worship together. Let us joyfully praise and worship God. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. In trust, let us call upon God's holy name, confess our sin, and receive forgiveness. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Merciful and gracious God, we have not loved as you command. We have not spoken truly. We have not cared for creation according to your will. What we intend, we have not pursued. What we mean to avoid, we embrace. Help us to know the mind of Christ, that in all thoughts, words, and deeds, our lives might come to honor you. When one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Turn now with unveiled faces and see to the health of all creation as newborn children of God. Amen. And so now, sisters and brothers in Christ, let us share and rejoice in that which Christ came to deliver. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it be with you all. And also with you. And now let us, from where we are, share exuberantly the peace of our Lord Christ, and may it fill this space. And so the mini message today is, is very, very mini. Um, in fact, maybe too mini for some folks, depending on how your eyes are doing. Um, I draw your attention to the front of the bulletin. And what you have there is a depiction of one of the more, if not most, famous paintings of the Transfiguration. And so probably no surprise, there's Jesus, and what's around him is this cloud that we're going to hear and talk more about. And then on either side of him, as you'll hear in the scripture, is Moses and Elijah. And then, any guesses, the three cowering folks on the ground, right? Might they be Peter, James, and John? Scripture says they were terrified when that happened. And one of the reasons I love this depiction so much is then if you look down on the bottom half or so of the painting, you'll see the people, the people, because Jesus went up to the mountaintop, but then he came immediately back down. And you can see if you look really carefully, there's someone holding a little boy and the little boy looks like he's about to fall over because the first thing Jesus did when he returned to the people was to heal a little boy of leprosy. And so there you have it. Now you can rightfully say, okay, so now you don't need to read the passage. Well, no one said it. Well, I was serious. I wasn't going to read it. I was... So you still want to hear the passage. Amen. And so let us receive all of the messages that are within this and Big points, because I haven't yet figured out the two people off to the left and in the background. I leave you with that mystery. And now let us open our hearts and our minds to hear the word of God. By your spirit, O God, enlighten our hearts, open our minds. 
Fill our vision with your radiance and give us life as we hear your word today. Amen. The first reading is Psalm 27 of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me and devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I asked of the Lord that will I seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger you who have been my help. Do not cast me off, do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Do not give me up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage Wait for the Lord.
Well, I found something very interesting there. In this Bible that I've had all my life, the 13th verse of Psalm 27 says, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the clouds. Editors break. If folks missed everything up until a moment ago, I'd be willing to start from the top. Okay, my apologies. That was on me. My mic wasn't on. Well, I found something very interesting in these two passages that we have been hearing today. See, this is the Bible. It doesn't look like your Bible because it's a scroll, but this is the Bible that I've had all my life. And the 13th verse of Psalm 27 says... I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the clouds. Now, I get it, I realize this made total sense to the psalmist because there were several Hebrew prophets who heard the word of God in a cloud on a mountaintop. Remember when Moses went up into the clouds on Mount Sinai for 40 days before he came back down with the Ten Commandments. And what a surprise when he did get back. There were the people singing and dancing and worshiping a golden calf. Clearly, the people were not ready to go on without their leader. Now, what I need you to do is just hold that thought for a moment because now I want to read you the story about this man, Jesus. Now, this one was written just about 35 years ago, and this one was written by the disciple named Luke. Now, about eight days after these sayings, 
Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was still saying this, a cloud, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent in those days and told no one, any of the things that they had seen. So did you catch all that? Going up a mountain? Getting lost in a cloud? The two most important Hebrew prophets dropping out of the cloud, and then out of the cloud comes this command from God, this is my son, my chosen. Listen to him and there it is, the goodness of God being received in a cloud. It's the fulfillment of the 13th verse of Psalm 27. It's so good, it's so good that Peter implores Jesus to let them build dwellings so they can stay. Are you kidding me? I mean, wouldn't you want to stay up there? I'd give all of my favorite quills to stay there with Jesus and Moses and Elijah. But it doesn't happen that way. Jesus scolds Peter for wanting to stay on the mountain, and immediately he leads the disciples down the mountain. And do you know what the first thing he does when he gets down with the people? He healed a young boy, a young boy with epilepsy because the boy's father had gone to the disciples to heal his son, and they couldn't do it. Once again, it seems people don't do too well without their leader. So here's, here's my dilemma. Clearly, whoever wrote that psalm didn't get it right. Moses, Elijah, and Jesus all go to the mountaintop to receive the word of God. All three of them hear God's call from a cloud. But then all three of them do the same thing. They come back down. The mountaintop is not the place that you go to stay. It's the place that you go to learn how to come back. God doesn't call us to live with our head in a cloud. So speaking of that, I've been thinking a lot lately about leaders and leadership. It seems to me that when leaders separate themselves from the people, the ones they are called to serve, often things don't turn out so well. I was there. I watched when the Roman Empire began to crumble because of the excesses of the emperors. It's a long story how I was able to do it, but I was there and I watched King George in England and Benito Mussolini in Italy and Adolf Hitler in Germany. And yes, I've seen Vladimir Putin in Russia. You see, they did not know and they did not care about the needs of the people they ruled with their heads in a cloud. 
But I believe this. I believe God calls us to live with our feet on the ground. Throughout history, the greatest leaders have been the ones who walked in the land of the living. Moses with the Israelites, Jesus with everyone, Martin Luther with German peasant farmers, Gandhi with farm workers in India, Mother Teresa with people dying in the streets of Calcutta, Dr. King marching with poor and oppressed people, and now Vladimir Zelensky, the Ukrainian president who is being surrounded by Russian forces even as we speak. And so addressing his people on the night before the invasion began, he sent a message to Putin. He said, as you attack, it is our faces you will see, not our backs. And then when he was urged to leave the capital and to lead his country from a safe distance, he now famously replied, I don't need a bus ticket. I need ammunition. When you listen to him talk, and when he talks to his people, you can almost hear Jesus talking to his first disciples before Good Friday. So now, now I need your help. I need your help, because now I'm going to tell you why I came. You look like a very wise and faithful people, so I'm counting on your discernment. Should I do it? Should I take my... We didn't have quills in my day. We had palms. How appropriate. Should I take my palm and make that one tiny little change in that psalm? What if instead of in the clouds, what if I just cross that out? And instead I put in, I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now I know the risk. If I get caught, they will burn every manuscript I've ever made, and I will lose my scribe license forever. But if I don't do it, the people may come to believe that they will only see the goodness of God in a cloud. They might look to the clouds for goodness. They might forget that the land of the living is filled with God's goodness. And then most tragically, they might lose hope in being one who brings God's goodness into the land of the living. Well, I thank you for listening and I thank you for being willing to help. And if you wonder what I ended up deciding to do in this difficult moment, you can open your Bible. And so now let us come together sharing the prayers that have been said out loud, but just as much the ones that we brought here in our hearts. Let us pray. And so, gracious God, we gather on this day, mindful of the wilderness. And no, not just because it's Lent and the calendar said so. God, we are feeling the wilderness. And so we come to you in prayer and we lift our voices for ourselves, but for sisters and brothers around the creation. For to be in the wilderness is to be alone, 
frightened, outcast, hungry, thirsty, and living with daily fear about the future. And so, God, there are so many of your children living right now in the wilderness. And so we ask that just as you did with Jesus, that you would send angels and that those angels would somehow, by your power and your grace, that they would deliver comfort, that they would deliver light and food and sustenance in the midst of the wilderness. So God, bless all that we pray, and then even more, bless us when we convert our prayers into action. Lead us to do the things that we can, as little as they may seem, to show our solidarity with those who suffer. God, help us to be the lights who live in the here and now in the land of the living. Gracious and wonderful God, we come to you with hearts beating with anxiety and yet wide open to receive your peace. So hear us now as we offer in one voice your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so now, sisters and brothers, let us go from this mountaintop out into the land of the living and let us be the ones who offer grace and hope and mercy and light. And most of all, may we be at peace. Amen.